One of the many questions that I get asked online is how to start your own podcast. So I thought in this episode, I'm going to share how I do it. Welcome to Blog Oklahoma. Ever since I started the Blog Oklahoma podcast, there have been a few people to ask me how they could start their own podcast, and I'm always happy to share what I've learned. In fact, I was just asked this again a few days ago, so I thought this would be a great topic to cover in this episode. So I'm going to share with you how I podcast. First off, I'm in no way a guru level expert in podcast production. Like you, I'm always learning new things. There are some great resources available online to help get you started, and I'll be sure to link a few of them in the show notes. Oh, speaking of show notes, since this is an audio podcast, I'm really going to encourage you to read the show notes for this episode. Besides providing the previously mentioned tutorial links, I'll share photos and screenshots of the equipment and software I use and provide links to where you can get more information, download, or purchase anything I mention. And one final thing before we get started. This is how I put together a podcast. There are many different ways to do this. Like I said before, I'm still learning new things. You don't need the same equipment or software I use. You can use a USB headset, the webcam on your laptop, uh, record on your phone, or run out and spend lots of money on studio-grade equipment. It's up to you. I don't believe there's a set way or a right way to do this, and honestly, don't let anybody tell you any differently. As long as you're happy with what you produced, that's how you do it. Okay, now that that's all out of the way, let's get started. This is how I produce a podcast. Step one, write the script and prepare the show notes. Before I record anything, I write a script. That way I know what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, some people can speak off the top of their head, just give them a topic and they can ramble on for an hour. But I try not to do that. That way I'm more coherent <laughs> and I don't say um a lot <laughs> and uh, and uh, I don't mumble and ramble and go on and on and on like I'm doing right now. So unless I'm in a conversation or something spontaneous happens, I mostly try to stick to the script. That way if I need to do multiple takes, which happens a lot with me, <laughs> I'm saying the same thing or at least close to the same thing and my thoughts will stay organized throughout the episode. Uh, my script format is changed over the years, as you know from the reboot. Uh, the one I'm using now, I write everything up in segments. Uh, as you know from listening to previous episodes, I'll say something, maybe a little music jingle will play, and then I'll say something else. Those are the different segments that I write up in my script. And also, I write it in the way I'm going to say it. That way, uh, sentence structure, grammar, throw that all out the window. Write it like you're going to say it. So when you're reading it, you don't stumble over yourself. Uh, and also make sure if you, if you got words that you have difficulty pronouncing, uh, just misspell it in the way you want to read it. So, uh, it works, it works out better that way. Of course, correct all that before you publish to the show notes. <laughs> And uh, speaking of show notes, as I'm writing the script, I prepare the show notes at the exact same time. Uh, that way I'll have all the links and everything ready to go when I'm publishing. Uh, that way I don't have a lot of work to do on the back end. I handle it all beforehand, usually a day or two before I even record. Sometimes uh, five minutes before I'm going to record, but I try to do it before. That way I have everything done. I can publish. I can publish the show notes and I can do everything at the same time and then I'll be done. <laughs> Step two, prepare the room and set up the equipment. Since I record at home, I have a room set aside to do all my recording in. It's our little home office. Before I record, I'll go through the room and tidy things up, make sure everything's in its place and I have nothing that would make noise or cause any echo. <laughs> This includes making sure there's no cats in the room. <laughs> you don't need them knocking things over while you're trying to record. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, okay, and then I'll set up the equipment after I've done all that. I keep all my podcasting equipment in a Rubbermaid container. Um, that way it's portable and I can move it from room to room if I need to. Plus, it keeps the dust and cat hair off of everything. All right, now here's a list of the equipment that I'm using right now. Remember, I'll have pictures and links to all of this in the show notes. And bear with me because I'm about to throw some model numbers at you. So <laughs> it's going to be... oh dry. <laughs> Currently I'm using an MXL 990 microphone. That's what you're hearing me use right now. I also have three Behringer XM 1800S microphones for when I have guests or if I need a backup. Um, the microphone right now is attached to a Behringer Zenix 802 mixer. I also have the Behringer Zenix 502 mixer. Uh, in prior incarnations of this podcast, I was actually using the 502. But the 802 is actually larger. I can do multiple mics, and I can do a thing called mix minus with it, meaning I could handle Skype calls, but we're not going to get into that right now. <laughs> uh, I haven't even done any, but I can with this mixer. <laughs> um, I, everything is attached to my Windows laptop. I uh, use a Behringer USB U-Control UCA-202 uh, sorry, 202 audio adapter. That converts the audio signal out of the mixer into digital so the laptop can understand it through the USB port. Um, after I get everything plugged in, I open up Audacity on my laptop. Now, Audacity is a free audio recording and editing application. It's cross-platform. It works with Windows, uh, Mac, and Linux. It's a great piece of software. Um, I go in there and I double-check all the settings. Now, the reason why I double-check all the settings is if you recall on episode 001, the reboot, it sounded terrible. Why did it sound terrible? Uh, silly me didn't double check the settings in Audacity and I recorded the entire podcast with the internal microphone of the laptop. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> All right. Well, the final thing I do after I double check the settings is I do a mic level test and make sure all the knobs are where I want them on the mixer. And then we go to step three, record. The thing I'm doing right now, <laughs> I hit record on Audacity, I speak into the microphone, and I record each segment of the podcast. Now, I like to do each segment of the podcast into its own track. That way I can move things around if I need to. And if I need to do multiple takes, I could either delete that track or mute it, record another track, and see which one I like better. <laughs> Now, I'm going to gloss over this part uh, a little bit, including some of the post-processing stuff you can do on Audacity, because there are so many great tutorials out there that will explain how to use Audacity way better than I can. Let's just say I use Audacity to record and mix everything in. Um, after I'm done uh, recording, uh, all the uh, voice segments of the podcast will go on to step four, mixing and post-production. So after I've done all the voice uh, recording, I'll go through and I'll uh, do noise reduction. Uh, that will remove any uh, fan noise or the open air hiss that you would hear on, on your recording. Uh, again, I'm going to gloss over that a little bit. There's plenty of tutorials on how to get Audacity to do noise removal and normalization and any host of other audio processing you want to do. So I'll mix, uh, I'll grab my music files, I put them into the uh, Audacity, I mix everything together, I check all the levels, and as soon as I'm done, uh, and of course I've listened to the podcast like six, seven times, it's a good thing these podcasts are now no more than seven minutes long, well, except for this one. <laughs> it's easy enough to listen to the entire podcast again. So after I'm completely done and everything is saved, I export it as a WAV file to my laptop, and I'll have it on my uh, desktop or somewhere. And then I'll take that WAV file, and I'll import it into iTunes to convert it to an MP3. Now, the reason why I'm using iTunes instead of using the direct MP3 export of Audacity is when I first started doing this, the MP3, the MP3 quality of the podcast just wasn't up to par where I wanted it to be. And I found using the converter inside of iTunes worked a whole lot better. Now that might have changed. I know there's a lot of people out there that use Audacity and export straight to MP3. 
that's great. But for me, I use iTunes. It works better for me. I can, I can, uh, and then as soon as I'm converted it to MP3, I can go in and add the, uh, the, the ID3 information. That's the name of the podcast, any descriptors, the, uh, the artwork that goes with the podcast. I save it all there. So after I'm done in iTunes, I will take that and then I'll find wherever iTunes put it, save it back to my desktop, rename the file, and then finally, step five, publish to Libsyn. Now, Libsyn is the service where I host my podcast. They're actually quite affordable. I'm spending roughly $20 a month on hosting. I get a lot of benefit. So if I'm ever going to produce a video or something, I can dump it in there without worrying about going over my usage limit. So I spend the 20 bucks a month. That's actually, you know, it's reasonable for me. So uh, what I do to Libsyn, uh, well, uh, first I open up uh, an FTP client. Um, uh, I have a software called FileZilla. Um, it's free and it's multi-platform too. So you open up FileZilla. I connect to Libsyn and I upload my MP3 file through FTP. There goes all those names and numbers again. <laughs> so I, I send my file to, to Libsyn. Now I haven't published anything. I just sent it there. Sending with FTP is a little bit easier than working in your browser because sometimes you'll accidentally close your browser or there's a hiccup or something. FTP seems to just work better. So after I get to it's uploaded, I'll log in the Libsyn, uh, click Add New Episode, select the file I just uploaded, write a tiny, tiny bit of uh, text to describe the episode, put a link to the show notes from my website in it, and hit save and it publishes. I've officially published my podcast at that point. So it, it auto, will automatically be found in iTunes at that point. Uh, if you have some other uh, podcasting client you're listening to, it will you will find it automatically. So uh, the, once, once I publish on Libsyn, I'm pretty well done. Except I have a couple more steps here. <laughs> on step six publish to blogoklahoma.net. So after I've sent it to Libsyn, I come back to my website, blogoklahoma.net. Now I don't use, now I could use Libsyn's website to host, technically host the website of the podcast there, but I would prefer to do it myself. So I wrote my own application here, blogoklahoma.net. That's all my code. Um, I go into the back end there. I put all the show notes in, the titles. I will link to the MP3 file from Libsyn. And as I publish on blogoklahoma.net, not only is it on the website, uh, I have it distributed through social media. So you'll get it on Google Plus and Twitter and Facebook. And also that drives my Roku channel. So the Blog Oklahoma podcast Roku channel now gets uh, access to uh, the, the the file hosted on Libsyn. So it's kind of a, a, a secondary step that most people don't have to do, but I, I do it anyway, so I have full control on how the show notes and everything look. <laughs> and then finally, finally, step seven, shut everything down, put up the equipment, make sure I pack everything neatly back into my purple box, put all the microphones back into their own cases, and then I'll go downstairs and watch TV. <laughs> so that's step seven. Very important. So there you have it. That's how I do a podcast. Now, I apologize if I just kind of glossed over everything. I go, oh, they, I'm not sure how you did that. Ask me. I'm on Google+. Plus. I'm on Twitter. And yes, if you have to, you can ask me on Facebook. Just go to Blog Oklahoma on all those spaces and ask me a question. If you want to know how to do something specific that I just mentioned? ask me. I am very happy to tell you all about it. Well, there you go. That's how I podcast. Wow, that was a long one, wasn't it? <laughs> Hopefully I was clear enough and didn't ramble too much. I'm happy to say that the Blog Oklahoma podcast now has its own cafe press store. So if you'd like a coffee mug, t-shirt, or tote bag with the Blog Oklahoma podcast artwork on it, please head on over to cafepress.com slash blog Oklahoma podcast. That's one word, blog Oklahoma podcast. Also, I have a link to it at blogoklahoma.net. <laughs> I've also created a couple of playlists for the bonus musical selections I share in the episode show notes. 
You can use these shortcuts. For Spotify, use blogoklahoma.net slash Spotify. That will open up the web version of Spotify, or it'll launch you right into the app. And also, for YouTube, go to blogoklahoma.net slash YT Playlist. That is YT Playlist, one word. Uh, I couldn't use YouTube there. Had to use that for somewhere else. <laughs> again, that was blogoklahoma.net YT Playlist. Uh, again, I'll have these links in the show notes. So, and I hope you really enjoy the bonus musical selections, and I thank you for listening to the Blog Oklahoma Podcast. I'm happy to announce as of July 26, 2015, Blog Oklahoma has 885 registered Oklahoma bloggers. Hooray! Your feedback is important, so please feel free to contact me with your comments or questions. You can get hold of me in a multitude of ways. Just visit blogoklahoma.net slash contact for more information. Check our show notes for all the links and bonus material from today's episode. And before I forget... If you start your own podcast, let me know about it. I'd love to hear it. This has been Kevin Latham for Blog Oklahoma. Until next time.